everybody, it's Hayes, and I am in front of Farallon, if you can't see that. And what we're going to talk about today is the Field Trip Ep Expo, which is next week. That was a horrible thing. Um, but what we're doing, we're partnering with a bunch of institutions, and we're going to uh, have this expo where we're inviting teachers, PTA members, uh, group leaders, um, anybody that does group travel or with students, uh, to come and uh, check out what the Twin Ports has to offer and we're doing that at the center on November 16th uh, 4 30 to 7. I know I'm reading off of this so you know I'm, I'm it's early in the morning and it's, it's cold and I don't have my coat on so but we're gonna do is we're gonna go in there and uh, talk to my friend Sarah hopefully she's got the door open for me there's Sarah Right there, she's holding the door for me. I'm gonna let you in. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I. I should have put my coat on. So, <laughs> thanks for letting me in, Sarah. You're welcome. So, Sarah, yes. what is it that you do here? We have really bad light. Let's go yeah, over really here. Bad light. Right here. We'll go in front of the undecorated Christmas yes, tree. Yes, right there. We're, we're getting ready, ready for the holidays. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, what's your title? What do you do here? What, where are we? Well, we are in Fairlawn Mansion, and mm -hmm. my name is Sarah Blank, and I'm the Executive Director of Superior Public Museums, and we manage three sites. So three we sites. Fairlawn Mansion, and the SS Meteor, and the Old Firehouse and Police Museum. Okay, cool. And then you guys are going to participate in the North Northland Field Trip Expo, which is next Thursday from 4.30 to 7 at the Bong Center, right? Yes, we're excited about that. Yep, and what we wanted to do today was just kind of give uh, people that might be thinking of coming a little sneak preview of what they might actually see if they decided to bring a school group to Fairlawn or the public museums, one of the other spots yeah, you a, do. A sneak peek. Yes, yeah, sneak peek. Well, so obviously we're in Fairlawn now. The other two sites are closed for the season, but we do have school groups coming in the spring and in the fall to those other sites, the ship and the fire hall. Mm -hmm. But um, Fairlawn's open year-round and will be decorated for Christmas soon. But we, soon, see? Yep, yeah, very soon. Yep. And uh, <laughs> but, um, So when groups come through this house, we mm -hmm. usually do like a traditional tour and we talk about how things were in the past. Okay. Um, and things were very different. So the kids get to see what it might be like to live with servants. Oh. And um, see how people filled their time before cell phones. How, how did you fill your time before cell phones? Crafting. Crafting? Reading. Reading. Oh, my goodness. Hiking. Hike. Oh, yeah, I get all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what what is, uh, like, give us a, the, a mini tour here. What, what do we... What would a, I'm a school group coming in, what would I see here? Yeah, well, first we'd probably talk about this light. Let's see if we can get some bad light on the light. Oh, there right, you there go. Is. Yeah. So even this light is different than what we would have had when we were, um, what, what we have now. Mm -hmm. So this was a dual fuel light. Um, the center here would have been electric, and then these two would have been gas because electricity wasn't stable. Mm -hmm. And kids have no idea that electricity like, didn't exist yeah. before. And so these little valves here, would have um, turned the gas on and off. Okay. And so how would they get the gas to the light? Pipes. Pipes through the walls with gas, right? Yeah. Okay. I know, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, where we start on the tour, and then we walk through the first floor, and we go all the way up to the third floor where the servants' quarters are. Okay. So where are we going now? Um, we're going to go and look at one of the call buttons. Okay. So here's one of the call buttons. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're... With the school group, we'll talk about you could push this little button mm -hmm. and a servant would appear and bring you your tea or your meal. Or whatever you might be requesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also really nice for the kids to just see um, this really beautiful space. Uh, it's uh, extraordinary with the painted ceilings and the exotic woodwork. And mm -hmm. It's not something that we get to experience in our everyday lives. Yeah, the, um, the craftsmanship is absolutely amazing in the house. Yeah, so I think it's really great, I know when I was a young person, to mm -hmm. start appreciating architecture and craftsmanship and just houses that are different than, you know, our 1950s and, and mm -hmm. uh, newer. Yeah, so this is one of your sites. Yeah. Um, in the summer months when the other places are open or, you know, um, what might they experience if, you, if they bring a tour group to, say, the Meteor or the Fire Museum? So the meteor, we walked through an entire ship, and the ship was built in 1896. And so you can, we're in the ground, it's not actually in the water, but okay. you can experience what life would have been like on the lakes in the mm -hmm. 1960s, and how the sailors would have lived, and how they would have eaten, wow. and um, 
you know, you can almost picture the waves crashing over that hull. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the ship is really active to her. Uh, there's okay. a lot of movement. Uh, we go up and move down a lot of very interesting staircases. Well, because you're on a ship. We're on a ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then over at the fire hall, uh, we look at historic fire trucks and the history of firefighting in Superior. Mm -hmm. And those trucks are really similar to the newer trucks of today. Mm. Um, so they essentially have the same technologies, but on a really simple level. And okay. um, if you call ahead and schedule the tour ahead of time, we can often get a local firefighter to come and really oh, talk cool. about those differences. Oh, cool. And so since I'm still somewhat of a newbie to the area, right. if a school group decides that they want to like brave the weather and do the whaleback or the one of those other ones that are closed in the winter, do you do those in the winter or not? The fire hall we can do in the winter. Okay. With advanced notice and at least 10 people, we can okay. bring a tour through that museum. Okay. Uh, the meteor is unsafe in the winter, so you're out of luck. <laughs> yeah, because that one's not really that ADA compliant, I'm guessing. I, I see it every day from my one is. yeah okay yeah. and I, I see the whale back from my office and it i i don't think i'd want to walk through there the no it becomes a skating rink actually. yeah oh. so um, maybe we could have a skating party in there new idea <laughs> new fundraiser <laughs> exactly. right there right. <laughs> dangerous idea but why not right yeah <laughs> so um anything else that you want to tease for the field trip expo or do you want to kind of leave the rest of the mm, mystery for I think, I think we'll leave the rest of mystery okay right. so Sarah, thank you for the time today, and um, we're gonna. I'm I'm heading. Sarah's not. Well, do you want Do you want to come with me to the zoo? I would like to, but I cannot. You're too busy. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the zoo right I, now. I love the zoo. Yeah, it's it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna go talk to Sarah over at the zoo because there's another Sarah, <laughs> and I'm gonna go talk to her just now. So I'll see you there. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. <laughs> hey, everybody. Now I'm over at the zoo, and. Uh, there's, Hi. <laughs> this is I'm Sarah. Sarah Wilcox, I'm the Director of Education, and this is Lana, our yeah. armor tiger, yes. behind me here. And she's uh, wanting to be the star right now. Yeah, say so. hi, Lana. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm over here now. We're, we're still talking about the uh, Northland Field Trip Expo, which is going to be, what, what's the flyer say? It says November 16th from yep. 4.30 to 7. Yep, and uh, the zoo is going to be a part of it, That's which is going to be really awesome. So I came over here to talk uh, briefly with Sarah. Um, do you want to just give a little bit of background about what you do here? and uh, some of the programs, and then we're going to head inside where it's warmer. Sure, yeah. So we have, um, gosh, about 20 different educational programs that we offer. Um, we can do a lot of them here at the zoo, and we can do a lot of them um, as a part of our outreach program, um, come to the classroom and present the animals there as well. So um, lots of different science top topics from adaptations to mm -hmm. habitats to animal life cycles. Um, <laughs> to tigers and big cats. Yes. Um, <laughs> right on cue there, a lot yes, of things. perfect. So, um, so yeah, we can, and we can all always customize programs for teachers' needs too, depending on what they're learning in the classroom, mm -hmm. um, whether their students are doing research on animals, um, mm -hmm. then we can sort of bring that to life here at the zoo for yeah. them. But you can't, you, you can't bring Lana to I the school. I can't bring Lana for obvious reasons to a school, yeah. and we can't go in there to play with her, although she really wants us to. <laughs> I, I can see that right now. She re I'm, she, I'm like halfway intrigued, but halfway scared too. Yeah, at the same time. yeah. it's kind of intimidating. It's the largest cat in the world, so. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you had Lana? About two years now, we have okay. we've had Lana here. So okay. yeah, yeah. Very, very, very uh, inquisitive tiger. Yes, <laughs> she was hand raised um, at the Minnesota Zoo okay. um, because her mom wasn't taking care of her enough. So um, she's very interested in people for that reason. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna head inside where it's a little bit warmer, and we're gonna take a look at some of the programs you're doing. And then you have a class uh, that's actually gonna be happening too in a little bit. We're gonna take a look at that. Yeah, we'll peek in there and see what they're up to. All right, so we're gonna come back in just a minute. Okay, we're inside, we're warm. Sarah, where are we? We're in the Griggs Learning Center, and this is where um, a lot of our animals that we use for our educational programs live. Um, so if you come to the zoo, you might see some animals that you've seen out in the community mm -hmm. before, like our rabbits, um, guinea pigs, snakes. And uh, we're gonna meet a couple, meet, meet one of yeah. them right now, yeah. and we'll talk about how we use the animal to mm -hmm. help make science come alive for students. So which so. one are we gonna go? I think we should go meet the ferret. We have new fer three new ferrets. Okay. Um, and they're sleeping right now, so I think we should wake them up. All right. That's your call. <laughs> never, my, I've been taught to never wake a, a child, and I think that goes the same for a ferret. But you're the trained expert, so let's. Let's give it a whirl. Well, it'll make for an interesting <laughs> video if it doesn't go well. So yeah. let's, let's All right. try. Let's, let's give it a whirl here. So do these ferrets have names? They do. Um, they're named after musicians. musicians. Or I should say composers. Okay. They are Mozart, Beethoven, and Igor. After 
Igor Stravinsky. Wow, pretty fancy names. Yeah, and the reason we went with that is because Igor, um, sorry, Beethoven is actually deaf. Okay. So that kind of gave us the idea. Oh, the ferret is actually deaf. The ferret deaf. is actually deaf, okay. yeah. So um, that kind of gave us the idea. Let's see who wants to wake up. Hi, guys. <clears throat> this one's Igor. Yeah, Igor. You say hi. Isn't <laughs> she so cute? Yeah. So what do you what do you use ferrets for? So ferrets help help us teach about a number of things. Um, for example, um, endangered species. The black-footed ferret is a, a great success story of how zoos have helped mm -hmm. um, help breed um, captive captive breed animals to put them back in the wild when they okay. are almost extinct. Okay. Um, but also to teach about um, different adaptations. Obviously, they're a weasel, so they have this long body for hunting mm -hmm. prairie dogs and down in tunnels, um, and for teaching about carnivores okay. um, and, and different um, adaptations and traits, <laughs> characteristics that uh, weasels and carnivores have. Okay. So, cool. good job, Igor. Yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> oh, yeah, <you're laughs> Give him some kisses. So, it's always fun for kids to meet um, meet an animal up close and mm -hmm. um, be able to touch it and make a connection with it, hear stories about it yeah. um, so that they can hopefully retain the information a little for better. For sure, for yeah. sure. And you say you just recently got these? Yeah, these okay. are the three boys. We we just got them a few months ago. Cool. So they're still in training a little bit, but they're doing great. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, let's get him back in there. Looks uh, like the other one's getting jealous. In there. Yeah, they're... <coughs> he, he wants his brother back. <laughs> <laughs> so what other, what other kind of animals do you have in this uh this room here i hear some something's trying something's to talk talking. let's yeah. go see yeah that's corbell that's she's whistling at us <laughs> like better come over and see us yeah hi corbell <laughs> <laughs> so Cor corbell's a double yellow-headed amazon parrot hi can you say hi hi corbell she's camera she's, shy exactly she knows she's oh. on camera <laughs> good girl <laughs> So what do you use the the parrots for for anything? Yeah, or? we um, when we do pr programs about birds or mm -hmm. endangered species. Again, these are endangered species um, adaptations of birds. Um, tropical rainforest programs. Um, we will talk with the parrots okay. and training too. When when we we have some animal care programs where we teach kids about how to take care of animals, mm -hmm. how to train animals, um, and so they they're a great example of, of okay. a successful. Uh, training and relationships that okay. people, people can have with animals. Cool. Well, I think uh, you've got a class either starting or about to start, and we're going to kind of go uh, sneak in on the class and, and see what they're doing. Yeah, so, let's do it. So we'll be right back again. All right, Sarah, we're getting ready to go sneak in on one of your classes. Yeah, so let's take a peek. This is um, one of our classes. We're just going to see how the teachers are using an animal to teach about that animal with the kids. <laughs> All right, so what do we got? Smelling and what do they use to smell? Do you notice what they use? Tongue. It uses its tongue. So he is sticking out his tongue so that he can smell. And he can smell if there's other snakes around, if there's any public around. If you were a snake, you could open your mouth as big as your head. And then you swallow all your food whole. If you like to touch the snake, you can take two fingers and they'll come around and you can touch them right on the back. What does it feel like? Well, we just left that class. Uh, Sarah, what, what was that class? That's our Cub Club preschool program we offer okay. once a month. So. Okay, cool. And we're sitting... Oh, there's Snapping Turtle. Here he is. This is Nestor, Snapping Turtle. Nestor? Nestor. That's an interesting name. Yeah, he's, he's about, I think, 18 years old now. And pretty big Snapping Turtle. They can live to be about 50 years old. Wow. He's, he's getting pretty... Uh, active since we sat down here. Yeah, he's interested in seeing what we're up to, I think. He's like, why are you sitting right there? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we just want to wrap up a little bit here about, um, about the actual Field Trip Expo itself. And so we're really excited that you guys are going to be a part of it. And who are you hoping to, to kind of see at the Expo? Yeah, we just hope that any um, educators of any kind that want to learn more about how the zoo can help you enhance your learning uh, for your students would come out and talk with us. Um, you can, um, we can talk about our programs you offer or how we can adapt a program to meet your needs. Yep. Um, and we're really excited to be there and to, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of other cool yeah. uh, attractions there as well that yep. people can talk to. All of these people, see all those logos? 
It's a lot of it's a lot of logos, and I'm gonna read them off the sheet because I can't remember them because I just I can't. Um, but Glen Sheen's gonna be there, the zoo, the Bong Veterans Center, which is me, um, Superior Public Museums, which is the Meteor Maritime Museum, Fairlawn Mansion, Old Firehouse, and Police Museums. We already saw Sarah um, this morning. The Lake Superior Railroad Museum, the Duluth Depot, Douglas County Historical Society, St. Louis County Historical Society, the Duluth Children's Museum, and the Lake Superior Estuary Research Reserve, as that turtle is climbing <laughs> in <laughs> right, my hair. In your hair. <laughs> um, but that is so many institutions, and I, I can't be so, I'm so grateful that you guys are willing to help out on this crazy first time idea that we're having, um, which is just to give an idea for school groups and other group tour operators the idea of what they can do in the Twin Ports area because it's not just you know going to the zoo for one day if they want to spend more time they can go get a better well-rounded education for their students or, or their group what we're doing that that's kind of what I'm hoping to get out of it so um, we're hoping to meet up with a lot of uh, great people so anything else you want to add before we sign no, off? No we or? just we hope to see you at the Field Trip Expo at the Bong Historical Center on Thursday November 16th from 4 30 to 7. You yep. get into the museum for free. Yes, you do. So you can look around the museum, which is really cool mm -hmm. um, while you're there as well. You did that better than I did. <laughs> that, that, that was my line, and she did it way better. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, come come check it out. You get in for free. There's no charge. Uh, we're just going to ask you if you do come to, to sign up, you know, so we get your contact information so we can uh, uh, get a hold of you later because I know at the center, we're going to be offering up a free field trip cool. for groups. And I know. Other groups are going to probably do some sort of giveaways too or not. So just if you're interested at all, come take a look at it. You get to see all these places, all these attractions in one spot. And if it goes over well, guess what happens when things go over well? We get to do it again. We get to do it again <laughs> with more people. So <laughs> this guy is really entertaining I me. I just, I think that's the perfect way to end it with a turtle trying to swim. <laughs> right there. So, hey, Sarah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you November 16th, 4.30 at the Bonk Center.